Today's video is all about efficiency and we're going to learn exactly what that means and we're going to look at a couple of equations that can help us find out what efficiency uh, to calculate efficiency. So here I've got a diagram of an electric motor and on the right of that diagram I've represented useful energy transfers and wasted energy transfers to see how efficient this might be and both of those bars together the red and the green together tell you the total energy input for this motor. So you can see a small proportion of the energy that goes in is actually useful, the rest is wasted. We could look at a second scenario, a second example with another motor and look at the similar information. So for our second motor here, we can see we've got an amount of energy being input into the system here, but much more of it is transferred usefully. So we say the second motor is more efficient because more of the energy being input is being transferred in a, use in a useful way, i.e as a kinetic energy store. We can look at our equations for calculating efficiency and the first one is useful output energy transfer divided by the total input energy transfer. So that's basically useful over total. And we get an answer as a decimal but if we want a percentage we can multiply by 100. Remember that both of those energies are measured in joules. So times 100 if you want a percentage, but sometimes we leave the answer as a decimal. The second equation is very similar, but we're not talking about energy transfers, we're talking about power outputs. And power, as we know, is measured in watts. If you remember, that means joules per second. And again, we can multiply by 100 if we want the answer as a percentage. So let's have a go at a couple of examples. So we'll do a nice simple one to start off with. So for the first motor, we've got a total energy input of 240 joules and a useful energy output as 80 joules. So for question one here, or example number one, we've got, not 240, we've got 80, which is our useful energy output, divided by 240. And that will give us an answer of 0 0.3 recurring. That's our answer as a decimal. If you want it as a percentage, we just multiply that by 100, and that will give us 33.3 .3, uh, recurring percent. Okay, so this is the efficiency of the first motor. For the second one, we're going to have a slightly trickier example. We've got a total energy input of 320. Sound and heat make up 15 and 140. So sound is 15 there and heat is 140. We want to know the kinetic energy store that's been transferred. So how do we work that out? Well, we know that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So the total energy output must equal the total energy input. So we can do 320 minus 15 minus 140 and that will give us the kinetic energy store, which is 165 and remember, that's in joules. So our useful energy transfer is 165 joules. So that would go on top of our fraction there and 320 goes along the bottom and that works out to be 0 0.52 as a decimal and as a percentage just multiply by 100 that will give us 52%. Okay so there's our answer for the second one. What might this look like in an exam question? Well, we've got another example here to have a go at, and this time it's to do with a solar cell panel which provides electricity from sunlight. And it gives us the efficiency there as 0 0.18, given as a decimal. We have a total power input given as 3 kilowatts. The unit is in kilowatts for this example. And we want to calculate the useful power output. So we would use the second equation there, which has the power which involves power, and we would then have 0 0.18, which is the efficiency, equals the useful power output, the useful power, over 3, which is the total power input. We would rearrange this equation, so we'd get 0 0.18 times 3, and that will give us the useful power, and that works out to be 0 0.54. So we can put 0 0.54 in our gap there and remember it's in kilowatts but they've already put in the kilowatts in there for you. So that's how you would get two marks. Okay now the last part, the last thing I want to cover is how we would increase the efficiency of different systems or different 
um, machine. So how do we do that? Depending on what it is, but the first way would be to reduce the heating effect if there's any moving parts, so reduce heat generation. And one way we can do that is by reducing friction. Friction is a force that can cause the generation of heat. If we reduce the friction, we reduce heat transfer. And that can be done using a lubricant, sometimes oil, sometimes grease or something like that. And that will reduce the friction and reduce the amount of heat generated. A second way would be to reduce sound. And again, that's could be done by using lubrication so the rubbing parts don't make as much sound. We can also use insulation. So if we are trying to heat something, usually or often water, using insulation to stop the energy being transferred to the surroundings will increase efficiency. And the example for that is water tanks that you're going to be using in the house or even pipes that transfer hot water, carry water, hot water from one place to another. Another example could be a kettle as well, although kettles tend to be quite efficient. Something else is lighting, so we can increase the efficiency of lighting. If we look at filament bulbs, these rely on wires being heated to high temperatures so, they, they, so that they can emit light, but they tend to be only about 5 to 15% efficient. Most of the energy is transferred as heat to the surroundings. If we use something like an LED bulb, these tend to be much higher in efficiency, around about 80 to 90, sometimes even a little bit higher in terms of their efficiency. So that way we can change any bulbs to increase efficiency of a lighting system. So we've got re reduction of heat energy, reduction of sound, insulation, and lighting in fact often is to do with reducing the generation of heat to make lighting more efficient. Let's just highlight that so we know what we're summarizing here in this diagram. And uh, that's basically it. So that's the idea behind efficiency, the equations that you need to know and remember. These won't be given to you on the equation sheet and a little summary of how we can increase efficiency. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next one.